July 21st, 6.13 p.m. Um, I don't know. Just listen. Yo, Jack Plex, answer the fucking phone, dude. specifically about the day that you first had even realized that you had herpes? I would say that the hard part is that um, it was not even like a single event. It was many events that led up to a diagnosis. Before I was actually diagnosed with herpes, I had been diagnosed with dermatitis, uh, staph infections, shingles, basically anything that the doctors could tell me that wasn't herpes. Until they finally like did a swab and they were like, yeah, that, that probably is, that's positive, that, it, that is what it is. But it took a very long time to get to that point. Did you get it from having intercourse for somebody or were you born with it? Um, I definitely got it from somebody. Like what was the symptom for you that made you be like, okay, this is for sure a thing that's happening to me right now? Um, well, my first outbreak, it was pretty crazy because I just literally had just given birth to my child and of course like when your body's whole defense is down like that's usually when it strikes so I got it really really bad the first time I probably had it for like months to years beforehand but I just got a crazy like giant patch of something on like my butt and it was just I was kind of scared to look at it but it just felt so crazy it was so painful I couldn't like sit I couldn't lay down like it was just really horrifically painful and I called a doctor and I look at it and he immediately was like dermatitis but one of the nurses actually said yeah that's herpes he's wrong and at first you know I, I wanted to believe the doctor the nurse was right but that was just because like I knew what it was it was just because I was kind of scared of that diagnosis at first I could definitely see why you were um, you were scared of it at first. So walk me through a little bit about once you had received your official diagnosis, how did you feel about it? When I when it was official, the very first thing that came to my head was um, single mother with herpes. That was like the very first thing that came to my head. Like that is so like herpes, like really, like that's like one of the worst things you could get and you have it and it's for life and you also have a baby. So like who is ever ever going to want you when you had gotten your diagnosis how long ago was this a little over a year now so actually so from a, sure. a year ago to now right now in this present moment how do you feel about your diagnosis right now um right now it's very much like uh it is what it is and you have to find the positives in it you have to be okay with it and at the end of the day it's really it really could be worse because when it's not active you could forget that you have it, you know? So in the long run, in the big picture, it doesn't make a difference. And it does give me certain benefits now that I can definitely see. And describe to me a little bit about the, the benefits uh, that you're currently seeing. I would say the biggest one was definitely, it was a very real wake up call. It was like, all right, like you've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of stuff that you had no business doing. You just have to find a way to you have to find a way to be okay with it. It was just a really long journey to get there, to get to that point of um, acceptance, I guess. What helped you reach this point of acceptance? Did you have like a support system? Did you journal? Took in a lot of positive media surrounding it. Like I followed people on Instagram that were positive about it. And um, they tell you like, oh, well, it kind of gives you a wake up call. It, tells you that you have to stop making mistakes. You have to stop just like trusting people just because like you like them. Are you even sure of the particular incident where you had for sure gotten it or you're, you're still not really all that sure? I have absolutely no idea. It could have been anybody. And are you saying that because it was like a point in your life where you were just having a lot of like casual sex or was it just a point in your life where or it just could have or just the way that the disease came out for you it could have been anyone based on how you got the symptoms does that make sense yeah it definitely makes sense um like it was definitely 
if I could guess, I would say it was all the casual sex I was having. Because, you know, like they say, like, you could have it from, like, losing your virginity to, like, somebody you slept with yesterday. You know, like, it could have been anything. It can lay dormant however long it wants to lay dormant. Just by, like, most likely it came from a period of my life where I was having a lot of casual sex. Really not even for fun. Really just to, like, fill a hole, fill a void, you know? And what was this, um, this hole that you were trying to fill? I think just, like, you know, the general discontent that people have for their lives like you know you're not good at this you're not good at that you're not prettier than her you're not more successful than her like or him like anybody being bored not knowing what to do with my life and knowing that i could receive love if i just let somebody have sex with me sex is a very um it's a very intense act i, th- I think that um and i'm not i'm not saying this by any means was you I'm, I'm saying generally speaking as like a society i think that we can all very much see that uh i think that we can all easily become desensitized to how like strong and and passionate the moments can be um when you're having sex with somebody um for you did these moments give you like almost like a high to like get away from this void was that what it was for you yeah i think that was somewhat the reason like it, it wasn't working very well, but I think that was my intention behind it. Why do you think it wasn't working very well? Because if you portray yourself as somebody that wants to have sex, just to have sex, and even if you don't think that you're portraying it, even if you feel that about yourself, like people are going to use you just for sex. And if people find out that like, or get the sense that you're easy, I guess, then they'll definitely be like, oh, they'll tell you whatever, whatever, whatever they want to want to that I would like that they think that I would like to hear. Do you think that this has had overall implications on your self-esteem? Well, well, before before you answer that question, how long was this period in your life? Um, I would say about like a year, even more than that. Yeah, a year and a half. So like during this year and a half, uh, when you look back on it, does it still have an effect on your self-esteem to this day? Not anymore. It used to, but like I was doing a lot of crazy shit that I shouldn't have been doing. And although it was a hard lesson that I had to learn and had to learn over and over again, it's just like the universe is going to keep throwing the same lesson at you until you learn it. So I'm glad that I went through it. I'm glad that I've learned from it. And I'm glad that now I know better. So I'm not, it doesn't hurt my self-esteem at all anymore. I'm actually pretty happy that I went through that because if I hadn't gone through that, I'd probably be a completely different person and also probably more of an asshole. Do you mind if we get into more about like this this hole that you're talking about, like this, this unhappiness? Because, and I, I think that I do bring up other episodes that I've had because now at this point I've kind of built rapport for myself as you guys know just through different episodes I think that most of the people that I do talk to do have a lasting effect on me and the the conversation I'm going to bring up is um the guy from that had brain surgery and he was talking about how uh, when he used to work a corporate job he hated it so much that he made a card game about how much he hated it as a a form of like retaliation and me and him had a discussion about how it's crazy how you can feel one way about a part of your life and you can either turn that emotion into something good or something bad for yourself and basically like energy is never destroyed it's always transferred like you're you're gonna feel this way about this thing either you're gonna turn it into a good thing or turn it into like a bad thing the thing that i that i want to get to the crux of with you is kind of like this 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 void what was what was this thing that was that was affecting you so deeply um i think it was a a lot of things that caused it it's kind of hard to put a finger on like actually what i was missing but yeah i've had lots of family issues i've had lots of issues with isolation i've had issues with not being very good at socializing i've had issues with uh assaults and like i used to have like pretty bad coke problem during this period of casual sex so it was just like just trying to like shovel anything that could possibly work to fill this hole and honestly now like the hole doesn't get filled with one thing it has to get filled with lots of different things and you're in charge of everything that goes in but it's like taking care of yourself and 
not having big issues with yourself and trying to keep everything together, trying to get your life on the right track. That's the thing that slowly fills the void, not just like a bunch of tiny little things that kind of make it feel like it's filling faster, if that makes sense. Do you speak to any of your family members or do you have anybody close to you? Just in general. Yeah, um, I'm definitely like low contact with most of my family with like, um, I'm really close to my brother and uh, one of my sisters and that's about it. Did you tell them about your diagnosis or you'd rather keep that to yourself? Um, I told my brother and sister that I'm close with, but as for everybody else, like they will never know that about me. And how did they react? Um, well, the crazy thing was that my brother immediately told me that he had it too, which is crazy because like, you know, what are the chances? Right, exactly. And my sister, she was just like very supportive. You know, she's very kind about it. Tells me about how common it is, stuff like that. She really helped me when I first found out for sure. Did you guys have like an in-depth conversation about how you both realized that or did you guys, or was he just like, yeah, I have it too. And you were like, oh. Well, he knew the, the girl that he got it from. So he told me about that and like how he's pretty bitter at her, but other than that, the, the conversation wasn't that detailed, you know, talking about talking to siblings about. Yeah, <laughs> can be a little, a little strange. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because I have yeah. two sisters, so I get it. So I'm like, uh, cause, but the thing is, is that like, it's strangely comforting though. like it's comforting that out of all the people that have this, it's like, it's your sibling. Cause like, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, oh my God, like, you know, we've been together since we were babies and you have this, but at the same time, it's like, uh, but I don't want to talk about this with you. So I was wondering like how you managed to kind of like go about that. Well, I'm very open. Like I tell my brother a lot of stuff like we're we definitely grew up together. We went through the same kind of stuff. So I do talk to him a lot. And I'm also an open book. So it's just I forget how exactly it came up. Actually, I think that he told me that he had it first. I think I actually have this backwards. I think he mentioned he was like, yeah, like I got herpes from so and so. And like, I just feel really terrible about it. Like it's hard to get over. And I was like, oh, I have it as well. But yeah, I think I got that backwards. I think he told me first. How are you handling being a single mother currently? I'm not going to lie and say that it's not hard. It's definitely really hard. You know, I got a two year old running around. Um, always got to make sure he's good. Always make sure that he has everything that he needs. Make sure he's at the right places while I work. You know, it's a lot, but I'm I mean, I've been doing it for this long. Don't show signs of stopping anytime soon. What's the number one thing you want to teach him? Um, I want to teach him to love himself. I think that's the single most important thing that I could ever teach him is confidence and not caring what other people think and just really not even just like loving yourself in like a hollow, like, oh, I love myself kind of way. Like I want him to deeply, deeply like himself, like enjoy parts of himself that like I know that he's special. What's the part of yourself that you enjoy the most? I'm very curious, like I'm very interested in the world. I want to know everything about the world. Hopefully I can apply that later in life. For now, it's just like a very strong curiosity for everything, really. So you're just kind of a wondrous person. Yeah, time. like I want to know all the the real world lore that I can possibly take in. <laughs> Have you been romantically involved in it with anybody else since? Yeah, um, I was in a relationship for maybe like six months and I disclosed to him that I have it. Um, he was very, very accepting. You know, he, he'd never been with anybody that had it before. So we kind of had to like talk about it and explain like what that meant. But he was totally OK with it. You know, we just used protection and that was that. And since then, I've been in a relationship for nine going on 10 months now. And like, it's just he didn't care at all. He did not care at all. It was like, all right, if you have it, like, I'm going to get it too kind of thing. That's that's like such a good thing for you, because I w once again, like, I can't really imagine how that feel. And, well, and once again, it's like it's not even it's just knowing that you have like a diagnosis for something that's going to be with you for the rest of your life. It, it does alter your perspective. And it doesn't it just knowing that in and of itself is already like a lot. And I think that it's really good. Like, I feel like happiness for you just knowing that you managed to find and it's not like you couldn't. And that's the thing too, but it's just like, I'm very glad that that's almost like a shortish time frame too, that you were able to like kind of recoil from that within yourself. Definitely makes sense. I was definitely surprised how easy it was. Like it was just, and not that it was like super, super easy. It was just like, it wasn't this big, heavy 
terrifying thing that you have to worry about all the time. Like it really was just like, yeah, I have this. If you don't actually want me, then like you can just leave. And if you do, then like we just gotta deal with this together. And it is kind of hard to, um, I'd say one of the hardest things to get used to is the fact that like it's lifelong. Like there's no cure, like there's no, there's nothing that's gonna make it stop forever. You know, so that it, that was kind of hard to get over. At the end of the day, um, it is possible. Um, I actually, earlier, you asked me a question and I started answering and then forgot what the question was halfway through. I don't, I try to play it off. I don't know if you noticed, but like, I would actually love to um, re-answer that question. Yeah, actually, let's go back to that because I'm, I'm fucking drawing blanks right now. What, what, what was the question I had asked you? Um, you'd asked me like, what are the benefits of Yes, it? yes. Um, as I started, like the best benefit is just the fact that like, um, it's a filter, like the people that love me are going to stay with me. The people that just wanted to have sex with me, like they don't see worth in me at that point. So they just, they leave. And that sounds really rough, but it's not, it's actually great that I know for sure with such, um, a quick question. Another benefit is just like the health benefits. Like, you know, when something's wrong, like it is very easy and obvious to tell that something's not going right internally like if i don't get sleep and i go to work like i'm definitely gonna get an outbreak that day because i should have been sleeping before i went to work if i've been dehydrated i'm gonna i'll get like a little outbreak if i've been drinking too much if i'm about to get sick i'll get an outbreak so it's just like a very good guide of like what's going on with me internally another benefit would just be like I know to use protection or like ask for STD results beforehand. Like I know that that's a very real thing because, you know, when you're younger and you first learning about sex and you hear about pregnancy and STDs, like I personally thought that that was like a rare occurrence. Like that's something that probably won't happen. You know, like I, you kind of think that you're invincible to it. You're not invincible. Like STDs are very, very common. It's very likely that you'll get one in your lifetime or a few of them in your lifetime. And now I know like it's it's real, like you can definitely receive anything. And I could have gotten something worse, which is the crazy part. I actually kind of lucked out with getting something that doesn't do anything to me except makes me hurt a little bit sometimes. Um, I think the first episode that I did was a guy with terminal cancer and he was talking about, oh, everybody always hears cancer. They always hear the word and then they're always like, oh, this is some distant, far away thing. And then he brought up a statistic where he said one in five people, um, people's lives will be affected by cancer. Not necessarily that the person will have cancer or anything, but just the fact that they'll be in contact or know somebody who's had it. And I actually do agree with you because when I was in middle high school and I was taking those, uh, those, those classes or whatever, where they educate you on these things, I was like, oh, like, you know, it seems like a far away thing, especially since, at least for me, when I was younger at, that, at those points in my life, it's really hard to see yourself being in that predicament or in that situation because it just seems so far away. But in reality, it's it's just common, bro. It's insane how common it is. And it, another thing too that kind of like I think maybe not not think about it as deeply was just the fact that like even like with cancer too, like I think there's a part of even me too where I'm like I just don't want to think about anybody in my life having it or I don't want to think about like myself having it. Like I just kind of like want to avoid that possibility. And there's good and bad in that. But once again, acknowledging it um, does bring a lot of humanity to the people that do suffer from it. And uh, the same way that that applies to that, I think that that also applies to this. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> the first thing that you said when you said that statistic, I was like, oh my goodness, like that is very common. Like wow but yeah like our brains do not like to think about bad things in the future like they did a study with like like a thousand people over different stages of life and your brain never ever wants to think about bad things that could potentially happen in the future when we think of something bad in the future like we either ruminate it because we're having a bad day or like we just like think about something else immediately it definitely is a defense mechanism too and it, it, it does help to a degree but it does also somewhat if we allow this to be encouraged too much it can have a effect on overall empathy of a society i believe it's just difficult bro it, it, it is really difficult to put yourself in the perspective of somebody else that's in that spot and like imagine those emotions and imagine that predicament yeah because like i think 
one of the biggest problems with the the herpes stigma is just the fact that nobody likes to talk about these things that like everything important comes from conversations i feel like like the little conversations that people have throughout their life like that's going to be what changes your perspective at the end of the day is what you hear and see that and also the fact that sex is so easily um popularized across all forms of media there's no media that's an exception to this which doesn't have to be a bad thing but with the acknowledgement of um this this act that we all or most of us partake in we should also have a just as big dialogue about how these diseases can and will affect you even if you are careful and that's the crazy part too you can still do everything right and you could still get an scd also do you have any questions for me i guess like i was a little curious because like, because most of the people that are interested in herpes are people with herpes i feel like so i was just a little bit um i was just interested like why are you interested in this topic Oh, I'm interested in this topic because, I mean, I'm I'm lucky enough to not have an STD. I'm just interested in the topic because I just I, I just straight up think it should just be talked about more. Um, there's no other reason. I just think that um, as a society, we should all collectively come together and once in a while engage in conversations that might be. For me, it's not uncomfortable, but to the listener that might be listening to what I'm saying right now, it might change their perspective and be able to think about these things a little bit more deeply. That way that next time they come into contact with somebody who has an STD, they can understand their, their plight a little bit more. It's a, it's a natural part of life. Once again, I myself haven't had it, but I, again, I also acknowledge that even if I do do everything right, I can have it. So I should um, also prepare myself with the emotional knowledge of what it might be like to even have it.